Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Becky and I welcome you to the second erector spinae muscle function video. If you didn't see last week's muscle function video, I started going over the erector spinae muscles. I went over the spinalis muscle last week. So if you didn't see that, you can check that out after this video or before this video. It doesn't matter which one that you view first. It's just how I started it. Now, remember that with the erector spinae muscles, there are three segments to it. Okay, there is a medial, a middle, and a lateral segment. Okay, and each segment of the erector spinae has three sub-segments. Okay, so there is a capitis, a cervicus, and a thoracus in each segment. Okay, they each have their individual name plus the uh, same name, technically. Uh, so, again, I'm going to be going over the middle section. Okay, last week we went over the spinalis. This week I'm going to go over the longissimus. So I'm going to be going over the longissimus cervicus, longissimus capitis, and longissimus thoracus. Okay, I will go over the origin, insertion, and function before I move on to the next one. And then after I went over all of them, I will go over exercises with you. I will provide the examples that were provided um, in the previous video um, just because you can do, I just don't want anybody thinking that there are different exercises for each erector spinae segment. They all pretty much work together. Okay, so let's get started with the longissimus capitis muscle. So the longissimus capitis muscle originates on the transverse processes of T1, T5, and also the articular uh, processes of C4 to C7, and then they insert onto the mastoid process. Okay, so the insertion, or excuse me, the origin of it, you're looking at between here and here. Okay, right about in there. Between the two fingers, you're looking at the origin of that. The insertion, you're looking at the mastoid process, and that is on the back of the head here. That is right about, uh, right about in here, okay? I don't know if you can see that. Right about in there, okay? So, the function of the longissimus capitis muscle is extension of the head and the cervical spine. So it pretty much helps you look up. Okay. Moving on to the second longissimus muscle, which is the longissimus cervicus muscle. This originates pretty much around about the same as the capitis muscle. Okay. It originates on the transverse processes of T1 to T6 and then inserts onto the spinous processes of C2 to C5. Okay, so again, uh, the origin of it is somewhat similar to the capitis portion of it. Okay, so the origin of it we're looking at between my fingers here. Okay, and then the insertion of it again is on the spinous processes of C2 to C5. And that's pretty much right dead center here. Okay. The function of the longissimus cervicus muscle is extension of the cervical spine along with lateral flexion and rotation of the cervical spine. So again, it helps you with looking up as well as tilting your head, your ear to your shoulder. Okay, so if I'm tilting my ear to my shoulder, it would be this side that is contracting. Okay, and also rotation of the head. So if you look to the side, this would be the side that would be contracted if I looked to this side. Okay, moving on to the third and final longissimus muscle. That is the longissimus thoracus muscle. Okay, this is originated on the posterior surface of the transverse processes of the lumbar vertebra and the thoracolumbar fascia. Alrighty. And then inserts onto all of the transverse processes of the thoracic vertebra 
and also onto the ninth and tenth ribs as well. Okay, so again, the origin you're looking at on the transverse processes of all the lumbar vertebra. Okay, so your lumbar is the section of your spine that's just above the sacrum. Okay, so you're looking about right in there. And then also on the fascia of the thoracic and lumbar. Okay, so pretty much all in here. Okay, you're looking at the origin of it. Okay, so again, the origin is all in there. And then it inserts onto the transverse processes of the thoracic vertebras, all of them, and also onto the ninth and the tenth ribs. So you're looking at um, an insertion all along all these vertebrae, all the way up, you know, to the ninth and tenth ribs as well. Okay, so the function of the longissimus thoracus, that's a mouthful, <laughs> okay, the function of the longissimus thoracus is extension of the thoracic and lumbar spine along with lateral flexion of the lumbar and the thoracic spine as well. Okay, so remember, extension of the spine is whenever you stand up. So if you're bent over picking something up and you stand up, that's the longissimus thoracus in, for this video purpose. Actually, that would be, you know, all of the erector spinae, but just pertaining to the longissimus muscle today, that would be the longissimus thoracus muscle, okay? So again, this will be lumbar and thoracic extension. Also, again, you have lumbar and thoracic lateral flexion to each side. Now, remember, whenever you're to one side, this would be the side that would be contracting because this would be the side that would be shortening, okay? You have it stretched and now it shortens, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and post some exercises that I had from last week, if you didn't see those, right here. has enjoyed my video. I hope everybody has learned something and is enjoying the uh, newer edits to my video. If you have any comments question, or questions for me, please go ahead and post it in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you guys next week. See you guys later.